Hey everyone, today I want to talk about a very important topic for me. Potentially, this is the most important video uh, on this channel so far. It has a lot to do with my mission to communicate art as something broader than just focusing on making a living or having a career. And why I feel that applying yourself, really learning, dedicating yourself to the craft, to your visual library and all of that can be a hobby, can be interesting on its own. I'm going to talk about these five topics that in my life have a lot of meaning, architecture and urban sketching, zoos, animal drawings, and my relationship with natural history museums, and how those have a very direct relationship with my development as an artist and my career as a whole. Art history and inspiration, something I've been talking a lot recently, especially the things that I don't know. I did a video focus on that. I'll add the link to the description. Uh, life drawing and gesture, draw, drawing people and understanding how they move and their personalities and all of that. And what about yourselves? Do you see art as a hobby? I would love to start a conversation on the comments so that we can all learn together. But why are we looking at this specific image from like Mayan buildings and sculptures and vegetation? It's just that recently I had the pleasure of attending the course Architecture for World Building by Gabriel Yeganian. This is a course that I've been looking up to ever since I started transitioning into an artistic career. I love environments. I wanted to be an environment concept artist. So I started learning my perspective, construction, enhancing my visual library on the topic and so on. So even back in 2015, 16, I was looking up to the school's concept design academy. And later on, I discovered Gabriel's work. And I really wanted to do this to grow my career, to grow my skills so that I could be employed as an environment concept artist. Since then, my career took a lot of directions and I landed where I'm at recruiting artists. So I'm constantly looking at art. I live around a lot of art and have great conversations with amazing artists, placing them in the right job for their uh, life, but doing art in a production environment, it's something I learned that is not for me. Uh, but I never disconnected myself from the love for art and the craft itself. So doing this course after, after so many years and being able to do the investment and just learn and be there, see him draw live and all of that was amazing. And I have no intentions of going into the career route. I just want to learn more about something I'm passionate about, architecture, cultures, history, construction, and maybe do some explorations of concept temples and constructions from imagination, but for my own pleasure, for my own discovery, to combine a lot of those elements that I'm excited about into something new. It's gonna be painful drawing from imagination, especially for me is really painful. I'm really proud of some of the drawings I did in this page that you're seeing. A lot of them are copies from real thing, but also some of them are putting together a, a lot of those references in something that looks new and fresh. And I'm very proud of the work that I did during this course. And drawing environments is something that stayed with me for a long time. I taught perspective drawing for the longest time. I talk about it here on the channel a lot as well. And I always had that close relationship with architecture because it's something really easier to convey perspective and show some examples. So I tended to go back to that topic. But recently I started really diving deeper and understanding why I come back to those topics. And in the end of the day, it goes back to passion. Why would I want to play the piano, for example? And I do uh, very maturely on my own, but because I love the instrument, I love music and so on. And this is the same here. So 
I love this building in Sao Paulo, near to my town. So every time I'm able to go there, I want to sit down and explore slowly every piece, every detail, every shape, its construction as a basis. So using the primitives, we've discussed dynamic sketching here in this channel a lot and this kind of stuff. So we get to a point where I'm able to translate a lot of that in the drawing. Sometimes uh, I'm going to fail. Sometimes I'm going to be a little more successful. Sometimes I'm, I'm even going to be proud of the drawing. And this is one of those cases. I really love how I design some of the details and put it all together, grouping values, grouping the, the hatching in some ways that are interesting. And even the ones that I failed and I have a drawing that I always come back to on my sketchbook that I failed drawing there, I still remember that place where I was, the people going around. So the experience of doing this stayed with me forever. Uh, I was also in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I looked at this beautiful staircase with the vegetation and so on. I didn't have the time to really stay there and draw at that moment. I didn't have my sketchbook with me, but I took a photograph and later on, I sketched uh, here at my home, trying to organize a lot of the readability, a lot of the challenges in there, and also taking the time to really look at it and absorb all the beauty, all the architecture and the work that was done to make this place happen. And last but not least from this urban sketching architecture area is this drawing. This is one of my proudest moments in, in drawing. I have it framed in my office. I always look at it with a lot of joy, both from the result as well as from taking the time to really study this detail from this beauty. It was a very hot day, so we needed to get some shade and sit down and stay there for a few hours. And I completed the drawing from photograph later on because drawing on location can be a little stressful. You get some things wrong. And even if I changed a little bit the, the proportions because I didn't get my construction the way I needed, you can see the perspective is a little off. Uh, the experience of being there with two friends having a conversation and exploring visually this place and this moment. I still remember a lot of the people passing by in the places uh, from this street. You can even see the address there if you want to find it in Google Maps. But these are the experiences and the memories I want to take with me and that I should do more. As I have a close relationship with that uh, career-wise, the environment concept art, as well as the perspective drawing, teaching. It's very hard for me to just draw for myself, but I force myself some from time to time to do that. The next topic that we're going to cover is animal drawing. And it's something really deep for me as it's the career I never took. I love this example. This is the first example I want to use. It's a drawing I did from a harpy, one of the most beautiful birds of prey, natural to some areas here in Brazil. But this moment was very special. It's super hard to draw from life in a zoo environment where you have a lot of distractions, you have a lot going on, you are far away from the animal. I don't have a lot of animal anatomy in my visual library, so I rely too much on observation. So I fail a lot, but this was, one that the moment was awesome. The harpy was close, as close to me as it could get. And the overall environment was pleasant. A lot of people came by, looked at the drawing and so on. And I was talking to some friends. So this was a very special moment. And it's also something that really sparked my inner questioning, why I don't draw more animals. And it has a lot to do with career. Early on, I understood that I didn't want to be a creature designer. I didn't want to be an animator. So drawing animals was kind of 
thought as a waste of time to some extent. If you look at my old sketchbooks and I did some tours here, I tend to go back to the animal topic a lot, but I really, in a way, prohibited myself, even if unconsciously, to draw it. I just drew it to improve observation, but not to really understand and appreciate the moment of doing that because there wasn't a career path that I wanted to take with that. So this is really important for me. Drawing as a hobby animals, it's such a pleasure for me as it could be for a lot of people, but sometimes we're really close. Oh, are we gonna sell commissions and this kind of stuff? Just draw because you like drawing. Uh, I had the experience of drawing from an owl uh, as well, in an event in London back in 2017, it was awesome. A lot of failed attempts. It wasn't just ours, but some uh, falcons and birds of prey. It's a very interesting and eye-opening experience of the relationship with nature and those animals. I love this video and this drawing by Aaron Blaze. I'll have a link in the description with Croco drawing at the zoo. Uh, and they drew uh, orangutan. I had the pleasure of drawing one myself. It came really close to the glass, so I was able to catch it a little better. Not as good as Aaron Blaze, but he has a, a whole career ahead of myself drawing a lot of animals and animating them. I, I really like learning from him. I'll add links as well so that you can find his YouTube channel, his courses, and a lot of content out there. So really interesting to see. And I also really enjoy animal anatomy now, not because I want to have that as a career, but because I want to learn more. The comparative anatomy from animals and humans, it really opened my eyes to the connection, the strong connection we have with nature, a lot of things I didn't know. So every time I have the chance to go and draw in uh, an anatomy museum, natural history museum, is such a pleasurable time. So some examples here from the museums I have close to my house, and I am able to go there from time to time and just sketch. I, will, I even had the pleasure of going to Paris recently and really look at this. It was an amazing moment. Imagine if a lot of people went there with their sketchbooks and this became something bigger. Even children drawing and learning and trying to get some of those shapes and understand those bones and constructions and where the muscles come in. One of the best teachers on this topic is Tara Whitlatch. I'll have a lot of links for her work as well in the description. So it was really, really uh, an amazing experience that I, I hope more people are able to have. If you have the pleasure of living close by to such a museum or when you're traveling, you have some time to go there. In Paris, this specific museum, even in the front, they have a very nice sculpture that I was able to sit down and do a little bit of a sketch as well. I didn't have a little camping seat that I take with myself when I go urban sketching and drawing from, from life. So I needed to find a bench where I could sit because it's really stressful to your legs if you stay too long drawing standing up. During this trip, I was also able to go to the Natural History Museum in Vienna. Another awesome experience, great exhibits, great reference to work from. Some of them I was successful, some of them I think I failed, but nonetheless, it doesn't matter. The experience is with me. I remember each one of those drawings where I was, the surroundings and everything that was happening. So the emotional memory that stays with us is really precious and something that I really encourage every one of you to experiment if you haven't done so. And even I was able to go to the Hofburg, uh, an important building in 
Vienna, where I was able to draw this sculpture of a lion. So it was also a different type of relationship with the subject matter, but also a special moment. So take your time, look around, you'll probably find some of these. In Sao Paulo, we have a lot of animal sculptures here and there. Uh, a lot of monuments from the past tend to have horses. So sometimes this is good enough for you to sit down and really experience that moment. And this is also a way you can connect with those artists. I, I showed the sculpture drawing from the Natural History Museum and this one now. So artists did this. They took the time, they made a lot of different artistic choices. So you can definitely learn from those as well. And most recently I've been trying to get my, wrap my head around some of those problems. I did this drawing of an alligator trying to replicate a little bit of what I saw in this sergeant drawings. I want to really do a video focusing on this amazing work and diving deeper into it. But there is a lot to learn on organizing detail, organizing readability, organizing values. You can see a lot of the values in here. The I tend to go here first sometimes and you, you walk all the way to the head. Uh, in here, you have the value taking your eyes all the way here. Suggestion of details and textures and not describing them. So there is a lot to learn in there. I also had the pleasure of seeing this during that trip. This is Eugene Delacroix, some cats that he did. And I drew a cat back in the day. So I tried a little bit to see some of the choices I did and some of the choices this master from the past did. You can also do the same with vegetation. I love drawing vegetation. I've learned a lot from it. I have, I have had a lot of masters in the past that I learned from, but also I'm trying to learn from Sargent or even uh, Winslow Homer. Have a lot of amazing examples from Florida region. I, I, to be honest, I don't even know how to start something like this. It's such a complex subject matter that I really don't know where to start, but I would love to do a copy. The only watercolor copy I did in the past is this one from John Singer Sargent as well. As if you follow the channel, you know that I have, I'm really passionate about Sargent. So you see a lot of his stuff here, but it was really interesting to learn from the shapes, the suggestions and all of that in this amazing work. And last, but definitely not least, the human figure. This is a topic that I also struggled with throughout my career because I knew I didn't want to do character design and all of that. So I stayed away a bit from those topics, wrongfully did, to be honest. But every time I went to a session, a figure drawing session, it could be a fast pose, or a longer pose where you could get some of those details. So the gesture is there, the details, experience that moment, that complex subject matter that you're tackling, the person that is posing, the struggles with staying with a pose for a long time, especially if it's a, a new model that is starting out. I've drew a lot of models in my life and I remember a lot of those moments as well. So that relationship with the figure, as well as each person and the beauty in the specificities from each person, I can't stress enough how much that opened my eyes to the beauty of the world around us. Doing portraits and finding those very unique traits that each one of us have, you start looking at faces differently, you start even looking at bodies differently. I studied a lot of Bridgman as well. I have a video with a sketchbook tour here on the channel I'm talking about my figure drawing and the mistakes that I did. But looking at some of the arms and hands from Bridgman, I also started looking at my arm and 
anatomy from other people's arms and so on in a very, very different way. So it's not about learning anatomy because I want to draw characters or I want to have a career in this. It's just appreciating the beauty of human form in drawing, it. taking the time to slow down and really observe, really look at that. I, I think there is a, a beauty to that that is priceless. Even Walt Stanchfield, I love these books. They are intended to teach gesture for animators so that they can, can convey life in their work. But they also teach us in a lot of different sources, animator survival guide and all of that. They can teach us about personality, how people walk, how people stand up, how people sit down and the different emotions that they convey in each of those postures, animals, what they're doing, even lifting weights have a beauty to it, the distribution of the weights, balancing. It teaches us not just art and animation, it teaches us about life. It's drawn to life. It's not by chance. So I highly encourage everyone that wants to take drawing as a hobby, art as a hobby, to experience a lot of different topics, subject matters, processes, look at different masters, copy them, learn from them, look at their lives and dive deeper on what they were looking at, the life that surrounded them, what was important and so on, so that we can grow as people, not just as professionals. I have nothing against the career in art. I think that's beautiful in all its different shape and specific areas of focus. But as we consider music as a hobby where you can learn, you can deep dive and learn your harmony, learn your specific music that you want to play, even for family and friends, but you want to experience that moment, you want to be there, you want to forget the rest of the world. The same can be done with art, drawing, painting. It's a very inspiring way to look at life. For the past decade that I've been drawing and painting and talking to a lot of different artists and creating content, I really changed my whole focus on how I see people, how I see animals, how I see nature, buildings, architecture, history through the eyes of art. It connected me to my childhood as well, when I drew back in when I was five, six, and so on, all the way to nowadays. So it's also a way to connect with our inner child, our creativity, our imagination, especially if you don't think this is a career, you don't have the pressure, you're just experimenting you're combining elements into something new. You're deciphering what other people do and the combinations they did in movies and those visuals, composition, choices, and all of that. And you can really expand the view of the world. So yeah, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was really informative to some way, but inspiring in another way. If you are not an artist and you just got here, I hope this was interesting enough to get you going with drawing and painting as a hobby. I talk a lot about resources to start learning from here on the channel, but I would love to hear from you guys. Do you see art as a hobby? Let's start a conversation in the comments. Thanks for getting to the end of the video. Hope you have a great day and we'll definitely catch up in other videos. Bye.